Hello, my dear friends. I'm going to uh, overdub this video in an effort to make my videos more accessible. It's going to be kind of like a really bad uh, Kung Fu movie, but I hope you enjoy it and I get to carry the point across. My name is Pedro Diaz and I am a musician in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. I would like to make a comment and express my opinion about the subject of whether high-end sound exists. It was inspired by an episode that Alfonso Villalobos made a few years ago. He made it in English and in Spanish. Of course, this is my very first video in this channel where I want to talk about audiophile subjects. And you could be the first subscriber of this channel. The biggest argument is that Alfonso says that there's noise, first with the records and the surface noise, the scratches, and all that stuff that comes with the process of reproducing uh, mechanical waves that are transmitted by a small nail in an analog manner to the reciprocate, which is the speaker, the coil. I have to decide how you say it, all these colloquialisms and Spanish, there's so many words. So he gave it the name Anois Log to the analog format. And then he talks about the uh, compact disc and digital and jitter. And he talks about the digital noise and he calls it digiter, which I think is funny also. He says that digital sound is not natural. And he ends up saying that digital does not transmit the emotion in music. And if there's bad sounds, you can never enjoy music. And it's all a fallacy, it's a rouge. And I'd like to tell you, Don Alfonso, that I agree pretty much everything that you say. However, I think the biggest problem is how you focus the argument. For example, if you're talking about music that has been recorded acoustically, chamber music, jazz, no electronic mediums, uh, symphonic music, orchestra, opera, or big choruses in church. It's impossible to reproduce this. The man who invented the quad speakers, Peter Walker, he said that in order to get a perfect sound system for you, you would have to replicate the shape of your ears because everyone has a different shape. The biggest problem with the high-end reproduction is the scale, the dimension, the size of what you're trying to reproduce. When you go to the movies and you see a documentary about whales, you can see huge images and in high definition that show whales in their natural habitat. However, if you ever had the chance to be in a small boat and a whale comes by your side, that can never be reproduced. It's a different experience. Emotionally, it's way, way too strong. But the focus of my argument is not that one. I don't think any manufacturer, any bona fide 
of high-end audio is trying to reproduce or replace the original experience. What we want is a reasonable facsimile where at least we can get close in the best possible way with technology and get perhaps maybe 75% of the experience. So once we accept that it is impossible to reproduce a real event of the acoustical character, then we start seeing things differently. For example, one of the greatest things about collecting music and why we listen to music is because we like to hear music, concerts, and songs from musicians and composers that have already died. This is one of my favorite recordings of the Paganini Concerto Number no. 1 for violin with Zino Francescati. This record is recorded mono. Of course, you cannot reproduce the experience, surround sound, or multi-axis that you get in a real home. However, I wanted to note that the first time that Vitrolas and early reproduction devices were shown, they used to make tests of lies, live versus recorded. And people got excited because they couldn't tell the difference. They were not used to hearing a reproduced sound. If it wasn't for these records, we would never get to hear these great artists like Fro Wangler, uh, Bernstein, Bernstein uh, Carlos Kleiber. So, this is the biggest value of high end audio. Of course, you can listen with any kind of electronic medium, but high end audio will get us closer. Here is my mono system. It's exclusively set up for mono. Here you can see my Klipsch La Scala. It's uh, connected to a mono amp. And I use also a mono cartridge. I can sit for hours and listen to her recordings of Rubinstein, Horowitz, Piatigorsky, or of Harry Belafonte or the Beatles in mono. And I'm telling you that I do get excited. And I can feel the emotion carried through the interpreter. It doesn't matter the recording quality, the message comes across. Listen to this. I get goosebumps. Of course. Once you use a stereo format and you start upgrading on the quality of the equipment and wasting more and more money because this is a bottomless pit, you start appreciating more three dimensionality, the stage, sound stage. Is that a word I can say in Spanish? A scenography? Oh, scenery. Soundstage. I have to see other channels of my Spanish colleagues who know all the uh, transliterations and anglicisms. It is possible. It is possible to get excited and feel emotion, even though you know it's a facsimile. And your brain knows. When you're listening to reproduced music, it sounds like reproduced music, obviously. You know it. But of course, there are moments when the equipment can fool you. It can surprise you. Many composers and musicians and conductors 
don't really care about the quality of the sound. But the mission of the interpretation that you carry in your brain and your heart. And of course you see the pictures in all records where Rubinstein or Heifetz are sitting at the mixer next to the producer and the engineer. But in reality, they were just focusing on technical details about the performance, the message, or phrasing, or mistakes, tempo changes, something that wasn't planned, but not the sound quality. Of course, but when you talk about electronic media, like uh, a Pink Floyd record, or a Beatles record, they say that the Sgt. Pepper record was recorded on Abbey Road and the other side of the hallway when Pink Floyd recorded Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And I think that if Roger Waters was in your house or my house and I was using similar equipment to what he used in the studio, I don't think that he would care about the sound quality. If whether he felt goosebumps or, or he felt any emotion or he would be focusing his brain would be thinking about how it is a recreation of the studio recording with electronic equipment but it is possible to make great recordings in digital also. And they need to be reproduced in the digital format. Another argument with the noise issues, I remember when I was studying at Juilliard and we would go to the concerts, live concerts in the recital hall and there was always some old lady or some old man. There was this old lady who was famous because or notorious, because she would show up to recitals and right in the middle, she would start opening bags with candy and bread and all the things. And these are some of the artifacts, analog artifacts, that are part of a performance. Also people coughing. Uh, the New York Philharmonic, Avery Fisher Hall, it's notorious for all the people coughing. Of course that the uh, audiences are getting a little bit older and that's a reality of today's performing venues live. And here comes Coco. What do you think Coco? Coco, my Samoyed. Coco also makes noise when I'm practicing. That's a huge artifact. Another thing I want to discuss is another source of noise. Air conditioners in the halls. 200 years ago, you could have heard a clavichord in a concert hall perfectly. Today, you cannot listen to a clavichord, in, even in Carnegie Hall. And also, at my job at the Met, they replaced the uh, light systems on the stage and they made the decision to change the light system for theater. And what happens is that these kind of lights have built-in fans to cool the, the elements, but now when there's supposed to be silence, all you hear is white noise. You don't hear the uh, proverbial uh, needle falling on the floor anymore. So, even listening to live music, it's impossible not to have noise. 
of course, but digital noise affects other things like rhythm, uh, continuity. They call that um, time smear. Please help me. <laughs> How to say these words in Spanish uh, compassionately if you have some comments. I'm not so sure about these terms in Spanish. Those friends who like classical music and who are also audiophiles, in addition to having a nice system, they go to live concerts. Not just because it's going to sound more real, but also because we have to get out of the cave. We're in the cave all the time. Audiophiles are antisocial. And it's also important to support musical institutions, to support the arts in the city that you live. Very important, support your musicians. Anyway, to sum it up, audio, high-end audio. Uh, it's true, it doesn't really exist. But at the same time, we can listen to these historical documents and great musicians, great conductors, great singers. We can also see it like in the beginning of the video. I love to go to the movies. I can see an IMAX movie. I like to see documentaries or Africa or Everest. You can see somebody climb the Everest, but I don't want to do that. I also don't want to be in the jungle when a, a lion is eating a gazelle. But high definition video will allow us to live that experience. And the higher the quality, the more emotion we can feel. Same thing if you're watching a scary movie. And some effects are so incredible that you are moved, not in the way you want to, but you can be fooled by electronic media, even if it's just a little while. The ear is a very sophisticated device. At the same time, the palate. We cannot eat caviar and lobster every day. doesn't matter how good it is. And that's why we suffer from this sickness, the audiophilia nervosa, because we get tired of the same equipment. I remember hearing audiophiles when they describe a system they really like. They say, it doesn't bother me. They don't say things like about dynamic range or color or timbre. They just say, it doesn't bother me. And that is one of the best indicators that you have a natural reproduction in your system. Thank you very much. And remember, you could be the first subscriber.